This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Awesome. Just give me a second, guys. Cool. A very good morning and uh, good evening, guys. We'll get started in a couple of minutes. <clears throat> So thank you for joining the demo guys. Um, I am going to be a trainer and uh, we'll be walking you through this demo for next 50 minutes. Okay, so uh, let me start with my introduction and then probably I'll uh, set the expectations on uh, what we are going to discuss of in today's session. Okay, so once we are done with the agenda, we'll get into the topics. Okay. So uh, let's try to make this session as interactive as possible, right? So to make the most out of it, you can ask questions at any point of time. Okay. And then, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> right. So my name is Suresh, guys. I have uh, 10 plus years of experience into IT. Okay. So right from the day one, I have been working as a data engineer. And, uh, you know, I have worked with organizations like UI, Deloitte, Franklin, and then I have got a chance to work for a couple of startups as well, where I have uh, driven a lot of projects, right? So talking about uh, my score skill set, right? Um, you know, I predominantly deal with, uh, you know, uh, areas which uses Python like data engineering or uh, data science right uh, i'm not much into web development but yes we do develop applications using python uh, when it's applications applications could be an automation applications or uh, you know uh, some kind of a desktop applications and then predominantly into data engineering solutions and then data science algorithms right so this is what i typically do in my day-to-day work <clears throat> right and uh, coming back to my training experience i have more than six years of experience of uh, you know training folks in uh, different areas right talking about programming languages i train folks on uh, java and python and then uh, i train people on azure data engineering course azure data services and also gcp data services Okay, so this is uh, some background about my training and uh, coming back to today's agenda, right? You know, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna walk you through a uh, few concepts of Python. We'll try to understand why people are behind Python. So you must be hearing this, right? You know, if you go to someone and ask for a suggestion, uh, boss, what do I need to learn? You know, the first suggestion you get, sorry. Guys, just give me a second.
I hope you are able to see my screen. Okay, so the first suggestion you might get is, uh, boss, you go learn Python and then maybe you are working on uh, some other technology and maybe you want to get into a different technology which have a lot of opportunities. Again, the first suggestion you would get is to go learn Python because it opens doors for uh, learning multiple technologies which are most happening currently in the industry. Okay, especially uh, when you are looking for an opportunity in uh, data area when i say data area it could be a data analyst it could be a data scientist or it could be a data engineering okay so with that introduction let me uh, just set up expectation on what we are going to discuss today so agenda i'm gonna cover some basic concepts of python you know uh, when i say some basic concepts of python you know few technical concepts and then few non-technical concepts okay so i would call it as intro intro to python <clears throat> and then i'm gonna walk you through our course structure okay how i have designed this course you know what will be covered as a part of this course what you'll get to learn and then once i'm done with these things you know we'll get into this q and a Okay, now uh, moving on to the first topic, right? Introduction to Python. So even before we try and understand what Python is, we'll try to understand what exactly a programming language is. Okay. So any idea guys, what exactly a programming language is? Or even let's not get till there. Um, any idea of what exactly a program is? Yes, no, maybe. A set of statements. Set of statements, okay. Any other answers? okay let me put it in a simple terminology guys i mean uh, our computers are lemon okay so when i say lemon they doesn't really understand what needs to be done okay so they cannot do some calculations by itself or they cannot open a browser and then you know uh, search for uh, some stuff by itself or they cannot open a word document and then create some documents by itself so it's all we doing that okay so how are we doing that by passing some set of instructions by passing some set of instructions okay and this set of instructions is what we call as a program okay this set of instructions what we call as a uh, program okay so you might ask me boss uh, i'm not giving any set of instructions to use a browser or maybe to create a document or maybe to play a movie so basically you are actually giving those instructions. Maybe you might not be aware of it, but every action you do on your system is triggering a program in the backend, guys. Okay. So, for example, maybe you want to play a movie. Uh, let's say you have opened a .mp4 file with a VLC media player. The moment you click on uh, play, you know, a code corresponding to that play functionality will be executing in the backend okay likewise maybe you want to pass your movie the moment you click on that pass button <clears throat> you know some program to do that pass functionality would be running in the back end likewise forward backward and then maybe you want to increase the volume decrease the volume so all these functionalities right you know some program is running in the back end for sure okay now talking about this programming language right uh, now we are on the same page that we need to give some instructions to the computer to get a task done okay so how do you give those instructions to your computer by using a programming language okay so programming language is a kind of medium which would let you give instructions to your computer 
okay so we'll talk about uh, different types of programming languages we have different classifications maybe in the first session okay like you know there are different types of languages um, low level language high level language object oriented programming language procedural language right there are a lot of classifications depending on how you code what you code right we'll talk about all those things but uh, yeah programming language uh, in simple terminology is a medium which would let you give the set of instructions to your computer as simple as that okay <clears throat> now talking about uh, i'm not sure here how to disable these whatsapp notifications i have closed that application still i'm getting these notifications okay so yeah coming back to the demo uh, python is one such programming language guys we have multiple programming languages you know uh, low level languages like uh, cobal pascal and then we have high level programming languages which started with c c++ and then java python right so does anyone have any exposure to any programming language I understand uh, you joining python meaning you might not be uh, having hands on with python but uh, anybody having any exposure to other programming languages yes no maybe yes uh, what java. programming language java okay so when you say java core java or uh, uh, you know you were into developing web applications using java uh, core java <laughs> Core Java, great. So, anybody else, guys? Anybody else? No, no, I didn't have any exposure to programming languages. Cool. So, on a lighter note, you know. This is the place where you'll get to learn a lot about uh, what a programming language has to offer, right? And, uh, you know, exposure to one programming language will make your life much more easy. Reason being, uh, you know, you learn one programming language, okay, religiously, and then you'll be able to scale up on any other programming language. Because for me, 70 to 75% of the concepts would still remain the same, only syntax changes. Okay. and uh, before I get into features of Python, um, may I know what is your reason for uh, joining for Python demo or maybe Python course? You are, you are planning to join Python course, right? So what is your reason? Uh, Anybody can, yeah. Yeah. So currently, I am pursuing MS in data science. So mm -hmm. for that, uh, Python would be helping me in my projects and in my near future career. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Others, anybody would like to share your thoughts on uh, choosing Python? or aspiring yeah. to learn python yeah yeah i'm in the uh, data analyst role and uh, mm -hmm. i was hoping that python would help me uh, you know to learn uh, <clears throat> mostly get into the programming side okay great any other thoughts guys Okay, cool. So now let me give you a few reasons why you should be learning Python. Okay, so the first and foremost reason, Python is the easiest programming language. How many of you agree? Or at least have you heard about it? People saying this is the easiest programming language to learn. Yes. Be it you are a beginner or you are at an intermediate level or maybe you have done some advanced programming and other programming languages okay python is the easiest programming language guys i have worked with uh, four different programming languages 
okay um, i started my career as a java developer uh, not a pure java developer but back then we were developing map reduce applications using java okay and then i have worked on scala scala is another programming language okay um, if somebody heard about uh, a framework called spark initially when it was launched you know the only programming language it supported was scala okay i mean there is a minor support for java too but uh, you know a uh, lot of gaps right and then uh, <clears throat> You know, I have worked on uh, something called as Lua. Lua is a scripting language, L-U-A. Okay. So basically, this Lua scripting language is used in Google. There is a tool called BigQuery. Okay. Uh, inside Google, the same tool is exposed as a Dremel, Dremel SQL. Okay. So if you want to write a user-defined function or maybe some kind of an automation, you'll have to use this Lua scripting language. So I have used Lua to some extent. And then Python have been my expertise because I have been using Python from past six, six and a half years. Okay. And uh, if today I get an opportunity to go back to Java or Scala, a big no. Okay. So I got addicted to this programming language. You know, my simplest reason is uh, the, this is the easiest programming language. Okay. And secondly, when it is the easiest programming language, it doesn't mean that you will not have a lot of opportunities here. This is the most wanted programming language right now in the market. Okay. So I'm not sure if somebody is aspiring for web development, you might also have to look at the alternatives. I will be brutally honest, guys. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you all the pros and cons because this demo is meant for that. Setting up the right expectations. So if you are looking for a web development, yes, you do have opportunities in web development using python by learning frameworks like django flask and there are some other frameworks too okay but uh, python is the is not the boss when it comes to uh, web development area we i mean still in that area java is the most preferred programming language okay now coming back to this data so data analyst these days you know um what you call uh, data analyst these days are also using python so earlier a data analyst skill set used to be sql and then uh, some reporting tool and then they should be expected to have a lot of business knowledge but these days even they have started building some kind of automations using uh, python especially in cloud area okay especially when they are using cloud warehouses uh, where they'll have to use some kind of a REST API to trigger things. Okay. I mean, they have their own set of applications. We'll, we'll talk about that while we go through our course. Next, data engineers. Data engineers, they breathe in and breathe out Python, guys. Because you talk about any data engineering tasks today on any cloud, be it GCP, Azure, AWS. I have worked on all the three clouds. Okay, so maybe the tool name will change, but at the end of the day, the framework they end up using is PySpark. PySpark is like heart of any data pipelines, be it real-time streaming pipeline or batch processing pipeline, doesn't really matter. And if my terminology is sounding French and Latin for you, that's okay. okay. Right? So over a period of time, you'll get used to them. I will be walking you through what I'm talking about, and then you'll get a good understanding on all these things okay but when i talk about data pipelines data pipelines are nothing but you know the flow of your data from your source till the usable format as simple as that in element terminology okay so pyspark have been the key player there and to develop a spark application using spark framework you have to know python there is no going back and then data science data science you know from past 10 15 years it has been python there are other uh, programming languages too like r uh, to some extent java java is uh, very 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 least okay but r was one of the most preferred programming language maybe when i started my career along with uh, python but now it's all python because r do have its own set of issues okay so python 
is used everywhere in uh, data side of the things be it a data analyst data engineering and this thing and talking about automations again python comes first okay so a lot of automations today is happening using python okay so what not guys i mean python is being used everywhere you know uh, you take any job description you know in either mandatory skill or good to have skill people are adding python okay so that's the kind of prominence it was able to gain so these are all the applications which i'm trying to give you where python is used okay and uh, you know what are the features that have made python unique but before we go there uh, does anyone have any idea on who invented python any idea guys who invented python my bad <clears throat> he's the guy guide of one rossum okay so he's the one who invented python right and uh, any idea what is the current version of python or what we are going to learn any guess python 3 i think yes point over correct python 3 so we don't really need to mention the version after decimal but uh, yeah python 3 is what we are going to learn because the latest release of python is uh, referred as python 3 okay so this is the current version which is advanced version compared to its uh, predecessors but uh, yeah right now we are using python 3 okay so python uh, um, how many of you have some exposure to programming language might not be in your projects but at least have learned programming during your uh, BTEC days and then you know you're not using it anymore or you tried to learn some programming language but gave up in between or maybe you have completed but you didn't get a chance to work on it does anybody have any exposure to any programming language I got one yes from uh, you know one of our participants but at least have you seen any programming language yeah yes 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 great okay so there are some features in python which would uh, make python stand out guys the first thing is typed programming language python is a typed programming language any idea what exactly is this meaning okay let me tell you okay so talking about uh, this term called typed programming language right uh, meaning you don't really have to specify the data type okay so python in most of the times will make your life easy when you're coding so uh, other programming language there is something called as data type basically i i understand the people who are new to programming language might not be able to understand what a data type is let me give you some background okay so generally in a programming language we create variables guys variable okay so uh, what is a variable again variable is something or maybe variable is a temporary space in your ram okay which would allow you to store some value a value can be an integer value a float value when i say float float is nothing but a decimal point value or maybe a string value string is nothing but a group of characters okay let's say python is a string suresh is a string select is a string okay so you create a variable and then you store some values you might ask me boss why do we have to store values in uh, ram or in memory okay answer is very simple to use that variable at a later point of time in your code okay so these are like uh, you know uh, foundation stones okay when you start your program <clears throat> right so whenever you create this variable using a programming language what you are actually doing is you are telling your computer boss i have to store a value of integer type or maybe a value of uh, string type so please allocate me some memory please allocate me some memory okay 
so what would uh, you know uh, tell that that is data type that is data type so data type can be an int data type can be a float data type can be a string there are a lot of other data types to which we will eventually discuss in our course but yes data type is something which would tell your computer uh, what type of value you are going to store in ram and then how much space you need to store that value as simple as that okay so in any other programming language you will have to take that pain of understanding you know what value you are storing what is the size of that value so on and so forth but in python you know you don't really need to worry about all those things because python would by default take care of itself okay you just create name is equals to suresh it would understand okay i'm gonna store a string value you don't really need to tell what data type it is okay so talking about memory memory would also be dynamically allocated you don't even need to tell you know how much memory that needs to be allocated based on the uh, value you are storing right it would automatically allocate that memory okay so this is a simple example guys i mean this is <clears throat> one of such features and second one is interpreted programming language okay so uh, i'm not gonna talk about what exactly interpreted language is but i'll tell you what this interpreted language would give you okay because uh, you know when our course starts we will talk about what is this interpreted versus compiled programming language when we discuss classifications but uh, yeah so uh, there are people who have exposure to programming language right so what is the most pain point you have seen guys while you are coding what is the biggest pain point you have seen anybody uh, for me i would say debugging whenever there is an issue debugging is the biggest pain point how many of you agree with me i'm not sure if you are following some programming pages in social media but there are a lot of memes too you know i'm i missed a semicolon and then my whole weekend is gone kind of a memes okay fortunately we don't have any semicolons in python okay but yes so debugging has been the biggest challenge guys i mean uh, not just for me but most of the programmers would say that okay uh, because for any other programming language let's say maybe you are writing 100 lines of code maybe you are writing 100 lines of code okay let's talk about java so there is no shortcut you'll have to write this 100 lines of code and then uh, you know you will have to test it okay so when you are testing let's say uh, if you are getting an error or maybe if you are not getting the expected output you'll have to go debug what's happening in this 100 lines of code okay so uh, what advantage does python give you so in python you don't really need to write all the 100 lines in go in one go you write one line and then check what output you are getting you write second line of code check what output you are getting you write third line of code check what output you are getting so you are actually developing your program in a incremental fashion okay so uh, yes you might ask me boss uh, uh, do we have to compromise with the performance yes you will be compromising with the performance but still uh, <clears throat> but still comparing that performance bottleneck with what you are getting with this approach is uh, valuable okay so this is what interpreted programming language gives you guys so basically you write one line of code check what's happening you write second line of code check what's happening you write third line of code check what's happening okay so that's the beauty of an interpreted programming language are we on the same page everyone are we good so far yes yes And then uh, next one, Python is <clears throat> object-oriented programming structure. Okay, so I mean this four-letter word, right? You know, 
it's the most complex path to understand okay so this is object oriented programming structures okay so this is another beauty of python you know um python would let you code in a procedural way but internally it creates all the objects that are needed so you don't really need to create a class you don't need to re create an object every single time okay so most of the applications can be built without having to create a class and an object i know you might not be able to understand what i'm talking at this point in time but it will definitely make sense okay but at least uh, you know it supports this object oriented programming structure even though you are uh, writing your code in a procedural way okay and then uh, guys just give me a second just a second and uh, next one python is open source any idea what exactly an open source meaning is yes no it's free yes. you need not buy it <clears throat> yes so basically when you talk about any software right uh, or a framework or a programming language whatever it is there are two categories guys one is open source and second one is license okay so when we talk about an uh, open source uh, software or an open source programming language so what exactly meant by that is first of all it's free to use like one of our participants said that's one part of it and second one anybody can contribute to it okay say so for example uh, people have found a feature which is really helpful and which is missing in that software or maybe which is missing in that uh, programming language or which is missing in that framework we will we will try to understand the difference between uh, framework programming language software too okay but uh, yeah um, so they can contribute to the project <clears throat> i'm considering all these three as a project yes it's an open source project anybody can contribute anybody can use okay so all these open source projects are maintained by uh, most of the open source projects are maintained by apache software foundation okay so let's say i thought you know adding some feature to this project would help okay so what i can do is i can uh, go implement the code to uh, get that feature and then i will submit it for review so this apache folks would uh, get that review done and uh, when they found that really helpful they will be merging that uh, whatever the code you have given into the actual project okay and you will be awarded with a title called open source contributor okay the moment any company see open source contributor on your cv you are hired guys they will not have a second thought okay so that is what we call as open source right anybody can use anybody can contribute it's not just about features but let's say i am using this free software and then i have found some bugs so what i can do is i can go log these bugs in uh, you know uh, they have a jira site you can just log those bugs in that uh, jira site okay and uh, let's say uh, you know someone from our uh, team is really interested to solve that bug they can pick it up they can solve it and then again they can submit it for a review okay there are multiple ways you can contribute to this open source community guys unlike uh, licensed software talking about licensed software right right so companies like microsoft google you know they create softwares and they sell softwares you pay to use them and then you'll not be able to contribute anything so all you can do is uh, giving a feedback saying that maybe having this feature would help okay and then maybe they will try and uh, add those features or fix those bugs in the coming releases which they'll be releasing as patches be it your windows patches or any other software patches you receive right you know that is what we call as licensed software <clears throat> so python is open source right and then uh, python 
is uh, easy to learn, which we have already discussed. Okay, and then Python is uh, uh, <clears throat> portable language. So, any idea what exactly is the meaning of this portable language? Yes, no, maybe. Like we can execute that same code in like a different system. Perfect. Though... I would say different platforms. So when I say platform, platform is nothing but your operating system plus hardware, guys. Okay. So let's say I have written a code in Windows. I can execute the same code in Unix machines as well as Mac machines. Okay. So maybe with uh, little changes here and there, but when you have written a modular code, that shouldn't be an issue too. Okay, so it is a portable language and then wide applications, wide range of applications where Python is used. <clears throat> okay, so there are a lot of applications where Python is being used currently, which we have already discussed, but uh, these are all the features which have made Python the most wanted programming language guys. Okay, so let me walk you through the course curriculum too. Just give me a second. So this is what you'll get to learn. And uh, this document will be shared with you by Career IT folks. Okay. So uh, module one is uh, basics of Python. So this basics of Python, what we are going to learn here will be applicable for any other programming languages too. Say for example, tomorrow you want to learn Scala or maybe Java or maybe some other programming language. These concepts will be same. Maybe few differences here and there. Only syntax will change. Okay, so we'll start with introduction to Python. I would say introduction to programming language and a Python will get to understand all the basic concepts of programming language, how it is executed in your system. And then what are the different uh, hardware components that are working together to make that happen, right? and then uh, installation and setup then we'll talk about the basic constructs of python like keywords variables data types and then we have conditional statements where we'll get to learn about if if else nested if else and then loops for loop while loop then control statements break continue okay and then we'll talk about arrays we'll not emphasize a lot on arrays because in python arrays are not the most uh, used functionality we we would instead go with either lists and if i have to use an array we have another module called numpy we generally go with numpy arrays okay but still i'll uh, walk you through what an array is and we will spend some time in understanding an array so that you will appreciate list okay uh, we'll talk about python functions and then built-in functions we have python string because string and string manipulation functions are uh, uh, one of the most asked questions in interviews too. Okay, so we will be talking about strings in depth and then we'll talk about date, calendar and time delta modules. And then uh, I'm going to walk you through Lambda functions, how a Python Lambda function would look like, uh, how you can do that functional programming, right? And then uh, I'm going to show you how you can create Python modules, your own modules. And then uh, file I.O. I'm going to show you how you how you can deal with uh, different types of files so uh, I, we will be uh, learning how to uh, operate with a csv file a json file an excel file and also a text file okay and then collections heart of any programming language okay where you store and uh, retrieve values at a later point in time i'm gonna cover uh, the four important collections list tuple set and dictionaries and there is a different variant of sets called frozen sets we'll be discussing that as well okay uh, we will spend a good amount of time in module 2 guys because this is a kind of uh, heart of any programming language okay so module 1 and module 2 itself would take a month or five weeks okay and then we'll start module 3 these are all small modules basically so module three, you will get to learn about object oriented programming concepts. Okay. Uh, where we'll start with what exactly a class is, what exactly an object is. We'll talk about uh, constructors. We'll talk about different types of methods we have. 
we'll talk about inheritance we'll talk about diamond problem we'll talk about abstract classes abstract methods right what not so we'll be covering a lot of things <clears throat> in uh, object oriented programming structures and uh, then we'll be moving on to module 4 uh, where we'll talk about some miscellaneous topics like exception handling and then how you can send an email uh, using your uh, python and then how you deal with uh, json decorators and generators decorators and generators will be covered as a part of module 3 but we'll reiterate it again okay and then uh, with module 4 python i want to teach you or what you need will be completed guys okay so from module 5 onwards i just want to show you how python is used or how python can be used in other areas okay so module 5 i'm gonna teach python for data science okay i'll be spending a week there to give you how the python is used in data science i'm not gonna teach you any data science algorithms there okay but i'm gonna teach you all the python modules that are used for data science not in depth but you'll get a fair idea on how python can be used there so i'll be walking you through numpy which is numerical python and uh, i'll be walking you through pandas and then we'll try to create some visualizations using matplotlib and seaborn okay and then module 6 is about uh, database connectivity how you can connect to your database using a python application okay so and we'll try to do crud operations guys crud stands for create read update and delete operations so we'll be using a mysql uh, database here so uh, I, I understand most of you are new to database background so we will spend a couple of hours understanding what a database is how do we do database operations directly on a database okay and then uh, probably we'll move on to the modules uh, python modules which would help you to understand uh, what's happening here okay how to get the same things done using a python code okay and then we will have uh, live workshops as well guys once we are done with module one not completely but uh, till the loops and the control statements we will have uh, simple coding games uh, <clears throat> using our python whatever we have learned and then we'll be doing some use cases from competitive coding platforms which i really liked and also i'll be sharing a lots of lots of examples uh, from my interview experiences okay and then we have another use case this is one of my favorite use cases which you'll not get anywhere in the internet okay so implementation of automated call center payment system using python object oriented programming structures so once we are done with uh, python object oriented programming structures you know we will be uh, doing this okay and then uh, uh, simple use cases using numpy and python okay so when i talk about this simple use cases right after we have learned python uh, guys just give me a second <clears throat> yeah talking about the simple use cases using numpy and pandas right so uh, once we are done with numpy i'm gonna talk about uh, some basics of uh, uh, image editing okay image processing i would say okay so uh, we'll get to know what exactly a pixel is and then how these rgb components are creating an image and how an rgb components can be represented using a 3d numpy array three dimensional numpy array and then we'll implement a simple uh, fun application guys image editor okay where you will get to see how to crop an image how to rotate an image right and then uh, how to create those effects right by changing the values rgb values so we'll play around and then uh, pandas once we are done with this pandas module uh, i'm gonna show you titanic data analysis okay we'll uh, take titanic data set it's a open data set provided by kaggle okay and then we'll try to do some kind of an analysis what are the different uh, factors that affected the survival rate or uh, death rate 
okay so that's about curriculum guys and uh, talking about the softwares i'm gonna use okay so we'll start with the uh, collab environment okay so it's a google uh, free software web based software okay web and cloud based software i would say okay so we will be using this collab notebooks to start learning python and eventually when we move to the other modules i'll be introducing ide so i'm gonna use uh, pycharm ide where i'm gonna show you how to develop an application how to deploy an application how to add modules so pycharm will start using pycharm from uh, uh, object oriented programming structures guys uh, when we do our workshop okay and uh, i'm gonna show you how to build modules how to install modules all those things in pycharm okay so basically these are the two softwares which we are going to use and eventually we will be using python uh, installed in your machine too i'm gonna show you how to use uh, python directly installed in your system and then uh, writing some code okay and then we also have to use this mysql mysql uh, database okay which is again an open source right so these are the softwares which we are going to use in our course okay now uh, let me take a pause and uh, open the forum for questions uh guys any administrative related questions you can reach out to career it folks okay so regarding the timings regarding the fees regarding uh, those things you can reach out to uh career it folks because at this point i do have no clue right uh, but anything related to the course anything related to the uh, content that is being covered or uh, you know uh, any other suggestions yes please go ahead and uh, shoot out your questions Any questions? Uh, so uh, I have a question regarding the future of this course like uh, once we finish the course how helpful it will be for the uh, for the career prospect as in if I want to uh, start looking for a job how much uh, more effort I'll have to do other than the Python if I'm looking at a, a data science or I mean data engineer role uh very good and uh, valid question sinduja so uh guys i mean uh, python alone will not fetch you a job okay uh, especially if you are in uh, us and doing masters right yeah. maybe uh for people who are in india who are freshers this course would uh, definitely fetch you a job okay yeah. so learning yeah. python alone and having python alone in your cv can definitely yeah. fetch you a job but not for the folks in uh, us okay so along with python you'll also have to learn some technology which uses python uh, it could be a data science course or it could be a data engineering course okay so again let me take uh, data engineering or maybe data science right so uh, what additionally you'll have to learn if you take data engineering so there is a framework called uh, spark okay and uh, if you implement the same spark applications using python programming language you call it as PySpark. Okay. okay and uh, yeah you will have to learn spark not just spark you know you will also have to learn the other uh, services too 
okay maybe probably you'll pick one cloud of your choice um you know my recommendation is azure though okay, okay. so mm-hmm. you learn uh, data services like uh, data factory azure data factory data bricks and then azure synapse you are all good to start you know giving your interviews and uh, talking about data science again you'll have to learn all the data science algorithms uh, i mean in the current scenario right uh, data science algorithms people are categorizing it into ml where you'll get to learn about all the basic data learning sorry machine learning algorithms okay be it classifications clusterings or regressions or predictions whatever it is right mm-hmm. and then uh, you have deep learning and then you have nlp and then you have computer vision okay so you might not learn you might not need to learn everything and uh, all but you can pick your choice uh, maybe few of them and then you know you can start preparing and once you are done you can start giving interviews then you might ask me boss if i have to learn all the algorithms how python can be used there so you implement those algorithms using python as simple as that okay okay so, uh, and uh, while talking about uh, nlp data uh, deep learning so all those will be covered in my course uh, in this course so, no 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 i'm talking about my course as in uh, the ms that i'm uh, okay. doing okay got it got it and the regression uh, regression clustering is more of data mining course right yes okay. i mean there is a different terminology people call it as data science machine learning and yeah. then uh, data mining okay yeah. uh, ai okay there are few differences here and there but uh, eventually you'll end up doing the same stuff okay now again i have another doubt like once we finish the course right uh, by the end of the course do we uh, do a project or how do we evaluate the course that we have done till now like uh, so by the end of the course i'll have to ha- i mean will i have something to present as a project or uh, yeah it's a very valid question and it's for everyone guys um this is a python course and you cannot build an application which you can showcase just by using python okay so we will be creating a lot of applications but they are not a project which you can present at least okay uh, let's say if you are going for a data engineering course or a data science course that is where you will get to do a project kind of a stuff okay so here it's all about assignments and uh, doing lots of lots of examples okay 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 so that's how you'll get used to it because uh, let's say uh, once python is done if i ask you to do a project on data engineering it doesn't make any sense right okay. so okay. generally what i do is i have created some curated set of use cases which would okay. give you that ultimate feeling of developing something okay what so uh in uh, so if i would want to summarize it would be like i can use mm-hmm. python and uh, use it in my course as in my personal uh, course that i'm doing and uh, bring out some projects as in where i can present as a as in my work as in it uh, python can be a medium yes that's correct okay Got it. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. I have to. Yeah, make. Python would be a great help uh, when it comes to ML ops as well. Okay. I'm not sure if you heard about this term called ML ops. So basically, machine learning plus DevOps is ML ops. Okay. How you see? For example, you write an algorithm, but how you productionize it? How you, mm-hmm. uh, you know, run it in production, right? so mm-hmm. even there uh, python comes handy <coughs> okay got it okay any other questions guys oh, thank you okay. i mean i'm good with the questions thank you no worries cool then we'll see you in uh, the first session guys Thank you thank you so much for your time Thank you